Alright guys, another technique that we use uh, is when the individual is coming with that overhand, that, that ice pick. Now, depending on how on how he's striking, okay, if he's if he's doing the retard Jim Carrey impression and just doing this, that's really not a great concern to me. When somebody reverses that grip, understand that in doing so, they're actually shortening their range. So by bringing this here, my range is shorter than it would be here. But it also means that every single one of my movements is going to run along an arc. From the elbow to the blade, it's going to swing on an arc. The problem is with that arc is that it can be manipulated pretty easily. So as he comes in, I'm looking to shield everything I can. So as he attacks, I'm coming in. Once again, I'm stepping that 45. I'm not just coming straight in, and I'm not moving laterally, which allows him to pivot and continue to attack. I want to move and cut that 45 so that I can actually catch that knife in retraction. So if he is in tight and he's coming here, I would much rather catch that knife when it's back here in retraction than when it's on that downward snap. Just like a punch, the power is at the end, okay? If I can catch a punch in retraction, if I can catch it back here, then it's just arm, it's just shoulder. If I get it out here, now I have hips, I have my body weight, I have the snap at the end, I have my arms, I have everything being generated in that, and there's a whole lot more force involved. So if I can catch even a bigger guy in retraction, that's the better place for me to be. Also, keep in mind that when he is planning on landing this knife, he is planning on landing it at a part of my body right here. So as he strikes, he's planning on landing it there. So if he does it a couple of times, and then I step in, notice that the knife is nowhere near me. Okay? Now, one of the techniques that I show for disarming an ice pick is when he comes in and I, I cut in, what I want you to see is how my, how my wrist falls. So, once it falls here, all I need to do is swing around. My hand is already elbow to, or uh, that forearm to forearm, I'm just going to grab the forearm and then I'm going to continue to rotate. And what's going to happen is, is as I rotate, you'll notice that my arm is nowhere near the blade. Even if this is a double edge, or even if he's got this blade towards me, from here, it's possible I might get cut. However, there's nothing vital here on the back that I'm overly concerned about. This, on the inside, is where I'm concerned. So if I can grab here, and then begin to rotate, you'll notice that it actually starts to put my arm on the flat side of the blade. If I continue rotating this around, it will actually strip that knife from his hand and then I can grab. It's nothing complicated and in reality when this is done full speed I can actually just snap it around and throw the knife right out. So he comes around again, I come here and then I just rotate through, the knife gets stripped out. The other thing is, is if I cut 45 and he tries to back fist with the knife, I have that same principle. I'm going to cut that 45 the same way, and then I'm going to strip using that same mechanism. Once this comes here, my hand goes under the elbow, and you'll notice that the flat side of the blade, once again, is on that outside of my arm. If I'm going to get cut, I may only have a choice as to where I get cut. If I'm in a knife fight, I'm probably going to get cut. So as I rotate this around, the flat part is near my uh, forearm, I can now rotate and I can continue stripping. He has two choices right now. He can either let go of the knife or he can hold on to the knife, in which case I can now rotate him. So that knife actually works as a lever because of the arc motion that he has to operate in with that ice pick grip. So once, one more time, he comes in and I can just rotate through like so. So you can either grab here, you can grab in tight, you can drop in here, however you're going to do it. The point is, is that the difficult part, 
closing that distance and controlling that attacking arm is done. So once again, however he attacks, I come in, I rotate that, and then I, the knife gets stripped. He comes in again, I come here, and then I can rotate through. And you can mix this up too if you have a training partner. He can approach with either way. It doesn't make any difference to me. Notice that my hands and the direction that I go, they don't change regardless of whether or not regardless of whether or not he's coming here or whether or not he's coming here. It's the same exact thing. My hands are going up and I'm shielding my body using my forearms, which is the least uh, injurious part on me. It's, it's, the, it's the part that I'm least concerned about getting injured. I'm going to present that towards him. I have that, that bone there that I can use for support. I'm going to come up and then I can then begin to rotate. So. Something to think about, you guys try.